ભગવાન ના અસીમ જય જય કાર હો દાદા ભગવાન ના સિમ જય જય કાર હો દાદા ભગવાન ના અસીમ જય જય કાર હો દાદા ભગવાન ના સિમ જય જય કાર હો દાદા ભગવાન ના અસીમ જય જય કાર હો દાદા ભગવાન ના સિમ જય જય કાર હો દાદા ભગવાન ના અસીમ જય જય કાર હો દાદા ભગવાન ના સિમ જય જય કાર હો દાદા ભગવાન ના અસીમ જય જય કાર હો દાદા ભગવાન ના સિમ 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 જય જય કાર હો દાદા ભગવાન ના દાદા ભગવાન ના સિમ જય જય કાર જય સચિદાનંદ દીપકાનજી ભૂલીનાનજી જય સચિદાનંદ જય સચિદાનંદાણ નમો આયરિયાણમ મુક્તારો સૌભાવણાસણો ઓમ નમો ભગવતે વાસુદેવાય ઓમ નમો ભગવતે વાસુદેવાય ઓમ નમ શિવાય ઓમ નમ શિવાય જય સચિદાનંદ સચિદાનંદ any feedback
Uh, yes, there's a chance. First, can I ask one question? Then maybe I share one experience. Okay, and then you can talk about your issues, okay? Okay, yes. Thank you. Yes, I will share one. Uh, this is May 24th, Dadawani, page number uh, 29. Uh, yeah. uh, this I, will, I also have the Gujarati uh, later, I can to, to share it also. Uh, the title is Free of Doubts, Free of Fear, Free of Association, and finally Moksha. Uh, it's actually when we give Gyan that the entire parliament gives its signature unanimously. Otherwise, it is not likely to re refrain from cre creating a ruckus within. The intellect expresses contention, other entity will express contention, the chit expresses contention, they collectively create an uproar. However, this is approved unanimously. So, one becomes free of doubts, one, one's real form as the self is without doubts, free of doubts, and this nishtamta, state free of doubts in relation to the self, gives rise to nirvayata, a state of fear, free, fearlessness. And a state of fearlessness gives rise to asangata, the state of a state of being free from all associations of the mind, speech, and body. Asangta is it's itself moksha. The self itself is asang. Uh, it definitely is asang. Then one can remain as the asang. Saru, uh, yeah, and also it says, with that state free of doubts in relation to the self, there is fearlessness, constant fearlessness prevails, and because of that, one remains asang. So here it says that uh, the, um, the state free of doubts is uh, after Gyan is there, and that leads to state of fearlessness, uh, Nirbhayata, and then that state of free from all associations. Of the mind, speech, and body. This as uh, this asangata, I would like to understand. The state of fearlessness gives rise to asangata. That is the thing which I wanted to understand. This is a wonderful outcome of the self-initiation ceremony and out of grace of enlightened soul in today's time, that of one, one and only one. And whatever we have today, posterity of that of one is again outcome of his divinity and what he has implanted within all of us. And here it is very well explained how through the initiation ceremony, through his divine grace, what happens is we get implanted as I am pure soul. And so nicely it is explained in this uh, whole uh, explanation that all our inner body self uh, faculties, that is, uh, outside speech and body is fine, but mind, intellect, reflective consciousness, and even ego, they have this contention and total determination that opens that I am pure soul without any doubt. So it's like intellect is fully satisfied, fully convinced through that separation science, which is uh, revealed and recited by Tata Bhagavan during that initiation ceremony and he made us uh, repeat that, follow him. And I would like to explain very briefly what really the science take place. It was because of his divine enlightened state, inner enlightened state of pure soul as Tata Bhagavan what really happens is he makes us recite. And he had said, while uh, 
performing that ceremony that you clearly listen to what I say and you have to only repeat like a parrot. Don't try to understand what it means. You might have heard, you might have read, you might have contemplated, med I mean, meditated and all that, all these years and all these lives. But it is for you to remain fully focused on what I say. So listen carefully what I say and just repeat like a parrot. And whatever you say, ultimately you also listen to what you have said. I mean, the way you follow him. And in that uh, state, his enlightened state becomes ours during that one hour initiation ceremony. And the outcome of that is our mind, intellect, reflective consciousness, chit, and ego. In total devotion and uh, surrender, uh, it accepts. And that doubtlessness opens out of grace at the end of the ceremony. And with total conviction and decision, everyone says who gets benefited by this initiation ceremony as I am your soul with total conviction and decision. So that is that doubtlessness which was previously on our body self, name bearer self as I am Dipakanan, I am name bearer which shifts and forever it remains as I am pure soul. That is doubtlessness for one's own self identity which is which happens to be the real identity and after that uh, initiation ceremony the body self name bearer body self remains and it is identified and recognized as a relative uh, body self that is relative and pure soul is real and that is where this separation is implanted perfectly within us and as precept primary two precepts, it is said, I mean, we made us, he made us say that by relative viewpoint, I am name bearer body self and by real viewpoint, I am pure soul. With these two viewpoints, which he has said, without these two uh, uh, viewpoint, the world, without this view, two viewpoint, world get dissolved. That's why he has said, the world is a puzzle itself, not by itself. The world is the puzzle itself. And there are two viewpoints to solve this puzzle, one relative and other real. Due to this acquisition of this of his grace and this initiation, separation, science, uh, ceremony, uh, this doubtlessness opens out of grace. And now through following of his precepts, the five precepts what he has given, that doubtlessness opens within us by our own self-effort. So one doubtlessness is, I'll explain, one doubtlessness opens out of his grace and that works passively. In the sense, if someone asks us, if someone asks us, Hey, who are you? Then we will say with clarity, with total conviction as I am pure soul. And that is what, where if someone asks, but under the karmic pressure, discharging karmic uh, suffering, this uh, awareness becomes passive. And it is not, you, we, we are under the potent influence of that, the the pressure of the suffering, of the karmic uh, effects. And that is where we have to remain and follow the precepts with which this doubtlessness opens within us by our effort through the following of his precepts, which is called doubtlessness. That is, that awareness remains even in that pressure of the karmic suffering. Yeah. The outcome of this doubtlessness is, you know, there is always fear of what will happen, what will happen, what if this happens, what if that happens. With that 
third precept that everything is within the boundaries of the control of the universal cosmic power of Vyavastit, what he has so nicely revealed, which he had seen and experienced, and that experience he gave us, gave us as precept, out of that understanding and sticking to that uh, third precept that whatever happens, it is through that operating power of the universal cosmic power of Vyavastit, Shakti, the power of Vyavastit. And when that happens, that fearlessness naturally opens that what's going to happen? Every Everything and anything is going to happen and will happen within the boundaries of this cosmic power operation only. And that which was projected in the past life. Yes. So that pressure, that burden, that tension, that worry is not there. That's why we come to that worryless state tensionless state and that happens to be that fearlessness and that is the biggest aspect because this fear make everyone do wrong things and ultimately end up in causing new karma but here that causing of new karma or building new uh, cause is impossible because of your inner convinced state that I am pure soul with total conviction and decision. So this doubtlessness gives rise to our state where there is no causing of new karma. Number one, the outcome of this is fearlessness of whatever happens in my body self, name bearer side, because everything happens in that part only and I become fearless. And ultimately, when I understand the science and the absoluteness of this universal cosmic power of Vyavastit, when it comes to my total understanding, total understanding through the following of the third precept and the fourth precept, that is settling of my accounts, my relational account of give and take, the outcome of that is I experience satisfaction total absolute separateness, what is said in our local Gujarati language as asangata, or in Hindi also it is said, asangata means total separateness. Everyone's ultimate experience is of this total separateness, absolute separateness. And that is why it is said that everyone's final experience is same, but everyone experiences this separateness in the context of his relative name bearer body self so this is a wonderful wondrous yeah. thing that really happens with everyone and that is why everyone's experience is same of separateness absolute separateness and this is how through the precept first through the initiation ceremony this thing take place out of uh, Dada Bhagavan's Dani Purush divine grace and through the following of his precepts five agnas this state of Absolute separateness gets experienced and that is finality of everyone. And then ultimately one gets liberated, gets ascended towards modes, rather, rather two modes. They are saying despite living um, um, amidst terrible associations, this, uh, the Nisangta uh, 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 prevails. This one, this also please explain a little bit. Come again. Despite living uh, as, as, as fearlessness arises, one remains asang. That's what I said. That because of this fearlessness, because that fearlessness is beginning. When absolute fearlessness opens, that results into a sangata. Amidst all association, that is amidst association of mind, speech, body, and related karmic suffering. Did you understand? Yeah, yeah, I got it. So that's why despite living amidst terrible association, isn't it? Not just terrible, I will say cutthroat situations, very trying situations of extreme likes and dislikes, hatred, that Nisangata or Asangata gets experienced, that total separateness, and that remains, prevails means that will be experienced. And in principle, it is there. But even in our worldly life situation, active life situation, 
even among trying situations, competition, comparison, and what not, hatred, this gets experience. And you overcome yeah. all these weaknesses gradually as you understand the power of universal cosmic power which operates everyone's relative body self. So one understanding also opens that all the settling of these accounts is between the relatives of different individuals. Nothing happens between the pure soul. Pure soul within everyone remains absolutely separate as it is within me in and in others, and in, rather in every living being. But this doesn't get experienced, and only through this initiation ceremony and out of grace only that happens. And that's how we ultimately experience that. And then he says that uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, intellect, chit, mind, chit, intellect, chit and uh, ego, they uh, they come to the conclusion that uh, this is the self. But they don't usually, they don't uh, come to any conclusion. They always... Uh, they, the reason, the reason is, the reason is intellect is the power of pure soul, light of pure soul, divine light of pure soul through the window, tainted window of egoism. And that is why that intellect always favors and supports the ego only. But when through this initiation ceremony, the direct light of the enlightened soul of Dada Bhagwan and in his very divine presence, he makes us recite the separation science between the body self and the pure soul self. The intellect becomes silent. It cannot uh, push or forcefully do anything. And that's how even intellect gets subsided because in the presence of the direct uh, light of pure soul, through which that enlightened soul make us recite the separation science, the total separation science between the body self and the pure soul self, this happens naturally. They all come to one unanimous conclusion. They, yes, they, that I am pure soul. Yeah, with total and that, decision and that conviction. Is, that is the, some kid, the permanent uh, convincer of the right belief. That and that's, that's what is called Shaiq Samkit. Permanent conviction of the right belief as I am pure soul. Which is called total conviction. With total conviction and total decision, I am pure soul. Period. Usually, usually they, this this uh, this uh, antaskaran this uh, in, uh, mind intellect it's in, agree uh, ego they don't come to any conclusion they don't agree with each other. Not possible. Yet. That's what I said. The light of intellect is light of same pure soul, but through the medium of egoism, which is tainted by selffulness, selfishness. So naturally, that light is the operating light without this uh, enlightenment. Usually, and when this enlightenment takes place, that is direct light of your soul touches you because of the presence of Dada Bhagwan in his very presence. We are reciting the differential uh, science between the body self and the pure soul self. Usually, these four people. Four things are all always uh, uh, fighting with each other, but here they are unanimously. Yes, that is the unique experience and the outcome of uh, the grace of the enlightened soul, Dada Bhagwan. Uh, there are no words to explain that. In fact, it is grace, and we can only to certain extent we can give an explanation, but it is only grace function. And Thank for you. every time, for for anyone and for every time, this enlightenment takes place out of grace only, not by anyone's individual self-efforts. Yes, you see the whole history. And that's why it is said it was, it, it is and it will be through the grace of a living enlightened soul only. And even, I will say, even in this posterity, after Dada Bhagwan passed away, his physical body is not there. But the same light of Dada Bhagwan, he has implanted within us. And that is working. And that's how people are getting benefited even today.
ടീഷർട്ട് ഇതാണ് bus and i think everything is really covered up nothing much to add i think in the reading of that dadavani three words have come conviction the entire antaskaran mind intellect chit and ego are convinced that i am pure soul then the third, second word was fearlessness because when the i is convinced that i am not the body but i am the pure soul so it becomes fearless that nothing is going to happen to me and whatever events will unfold in my life they will unfold based on scientific circumstantial evidences or vivastit shakti so that leads to fearlessness absolute conviction of who i am i leads to fearlessness and the third word was asangata or separateness now asangta is a very it's a unique, unique word a unique thing describing the state of being of the soul and body and what it really means is that although i am associated with the body i am inside the body i am close to the body but still i am separate from the body. sang means company or association so the soul the pure soul is associated or in closely in close uh, association with the body physical self but i in spite of being close to him i am separate from him that means the pure soul in spite of being in close contact with the body is separate from the body that is what dada bhagwan is trying to say in asangta or separateness it is there is a fine gap very fine physical gap between the pure soul and the body although the pure soul is within the body. so what they say is who are sangachu or i am separate i am although i am in touch or company of the or associated with the body i am separate from the body that is what ada bhagwan is trying to say earlier i was the name bearer so i was the body now i am the pure soul so i am separate from the body physically separate from the body that is the thing that asangta is trying to tell the word asangta is trying to convey i am separate physically separate from the body. so that is what the three words really mean in the paragraph jai sachi jai sachi jai sachi dana just a minute I like to thank Dr. Kashyap ji to bring this out so nicely. Your hard work of uh, self. All grace uh, of Dada ji. <laughs> yeah, that's Raji. fine. We all <laughs> everything is out of grace of Dada ji only. But your personal self effort to know, understand, and uh, really understand this science is great. Thank you so much, Jay Sachidan. Uh, yeah. yeah, one experience I would like to share. Uh, Uh, this i uh, have a big man uh, ego uh, this is a uh, tuber you know so i tried this one thing that to uh, the thank uh, 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 you know uh, dada ji and uh, aap putra and all me whenever any when any success is there i thank you know so so actually it is uh, so that that controls i feel that controls my the right uh, tuber you know so uh, because otherwise what happened is that when when any success is happened then the pride goes up and, and when failure happens then pride goes down that up down it happens but that uh, that experience i would i i would want it to see mm-hmm. mm-hmm. thanking thanking uh, uh, others you know helps uh, in controlling the pride uh, uh, due but that that is what my experience this experience you want comment on that koi danji yeah that is true that is true you see basically two things happen first i was the doer so when things go my way when I, things go my way i feel very proud that i did it now as we gradually understand the other science and as we gradually understand that 
i am not the independent doer many favorable circumstances came together and things went my way according to what i wanted to do so as gradually we start realizing this this i did this the doership fades away especially this comes to the four light when things don't go our way in spite of our best of efforts and wishes when you want to do something and things don't go our way and that thing that we want to do do does not take place then we start finding out why it didn't take place and then we find that because of this reason because of that person because of this situation it did not go so then it dawns upon us that so many scientific circumstantial evidences or so many supporting evidences come together and things take place individually i don't have the power to do it independent so failures lead to the realization of vyavasthit shakti in operation and based on that when things go our way when we succeed in any assignment or any task the same knowledge props up that it was not me independently doing it it was the coming together of so many circumstances that things fell in place and the work which i want to do happened so out of experience and the absolute knowledge that dada bhagwan gives us after gnan vidhi that vyavasthi shakti is the doer you are not the independent doer you are one of the causes of the doer your desire to do something is one of the evidences and other supporting evidences uh, fructifies whatever you wanted to do so the out of experience and our personal experience of seeing things as they unfold in our lives and the knowledge of evasive shakti or scientific circumstantial evidences as the doer this experience comes up so the doership aspect two doership aspects the doer shall i have done this that diminishes uh, and the other person has done this that also diminishes he he helped me or he spoke rudely to me he did that he did that so we start seeing the other person as non doer non independent non doer so we see him as fault free or not the person responsible for my suffering and the second thing is i did this so that also reduces and that we call it in gujarati we call it garvaras you know the sense of pride that i did this so that also diminishes that i have not done it many favorable circumstances have enabled me to succeed so as you said the pride factor or the real word is garvaras you know the enjoyment ras means to enjoy and take pride in i did this so that also fades away and we start seeing as everybody as a karta or non doer even the self i am also not doer and the opposite person also is not doer so that way it helps us to reduce our pride or the sense of ownership that i did this and that's how pride gradually diminishes and we just observe what's happening at times in major success the ego feel feel nice it'll feel happy it'll feel elevated when you meet success or things go your way so the nice feeling will be there but what will happen is we will not get engulfed into that will not get entangled or mixed it with it and we will observe yes while one is feeling nice and at the same time this gnan will also remain yes things went your way because of so many supporting evidences or at times we may say it went well with the help of dada's grace divine grace so that's how happiness in file number 1 an observation in ourselves and we will not be feeling proud about it so the, the pride man ka shay will gradually reduce so this is the science that works behind how non doership leads to reduction in pride yes sir yes thank you kiran ke matma you know kushbhai 
<coughs> led us to a good team for our Purusha of Manwach and Kaya and everyday interactions and issues and problems. Anybody? Miraben, Chailaben? Any experience, Manvi? Okay, Rani. Okay, uh, Jay Sachidanan. Pulinanji, Deepakaranji, Mahatmas. Um, <clears throat> if so, I have lots of things just observed that um, definitely could use um, the basically the homework that was given to us last Tuesday, and I think one that I struggle with is. Um, resisting so i i'm not sure if that's for agnya number three or four but like sometimes i'll get work assignments and the first thought in my head is i don't want to do this uh i don't want to go there i don't you know i don't want to have to deal with this it's a i've noticed it's like a negative resistance um so let's i, I will start there that's one of my issues and i have really paid attention that that has come up a lot. It even wasn't aware of it until the homework assignment um, or how prevalent it was. And so that that is uh, my lack of understanding. Is that not a settling account or is that not accepting things are, as they are? Jay Sachidanan. Jay Sachidanan. This is always a question in every situation to do or not to do. But then uh, not to do, as Dr. Bhagavan so nicely revealed that any negativity is disastrous. So in those situations, if you are not able to make a decision, at the same time, you are moved towards no. Then you ask few people, your well-wisher, should I do? Do you think I should go or no? Then you will get your answer. Because not that every time you have to go and not that every time you don't have to go, but our choice, our decision is primarily based on our likes and dislikes. Even if things, place, I mean, situations are not really very helpful or uh, useful for our progress, but because we like some individuals, we accept those invitations and we do go there. But at times when it is useful for us, but because of some dislike, some discomfort, we don't agree with that, and uh, you don't want to do that. That that resistance is there within you. But here, so first thing, first step is, most of the time it is very clear. You have to always ask, what if you don't go? What is going to happen? And what if you go, what is going to happen? Most of the time, our intellect and our resultant vision of, that is parinamic drishti. There is, it can show the results even beforehand it happening. It happens. So most of the time, you will definitely uh, get a clear picture about what is going to happen if you go there and what is going to happen if you don't go there. So in the, I mean, evaluating the situation based on this understanding, you should be able to make a very clear and firm decision. So, but in cases where uh, uh, decision is obvious, like you have to go. But because of some reservation, you don't go. And in certain places, the decision is obvious that you don't have to go. Then find some excuse not to go. Do you understand that? So it's like someone is, I mean, I'm giving a very weird example. Uh, someone is throwing a big party. And you know that uh, people are not going to act wisely over there. Always find some excuse. Oh, stomach upset. I couldn't wake up. I couldn't even walk. 
and i have taken medicine i am resting even if you, if you get a call during the party when the party is going on so hey why didn't you show up so oh, i am really upset i am down with this is 1 2 3 4 5 i have taken medicine and i am resting which i used to do when those people at our side one small machine is started commissioned and they want because they want to eat and drink and enjoy which is not what do what do they say my soup so <laughs> i find an excuse not to go there but still they have try all their means so in the afternoon itself i tell my cook or the having very upset stomach do something he will give me something and he will only protect me oh don't disturb that guy he is he is not well and he needs rest mm -hmm. so this is what likes and dislikes they do work but where things are obvious find an excuse so nobody can claim and at other places you know that you cannot say no because you are supposed to be there and you must attend then attend that place and then then it's so whatever party whatever gathering is and understand that was your compulsory suffering it is called nikachit karma mandatory karmic suffering which you have to pass through because your absence will cause more trouble than your presence right so you can nicely evaluate at the same time ask to you well wisher and you will get your answer jai sachidan jai sachidan you see as i understand uh, rani's question is there is resistance that i don't want to do this i don't want to do that mm. so it is basically resistance at two three places that you do have to go to an event or a place or you have resistance to the, some type of work which you have to do which mm -hmm. you don't like you see so that is the gross level essentially it is the interplay of mind and intellect which says i don't want to do you know, that happens when we have uh, preconceived notions of like and dislike i don't like this i don't like that or it's a waste of time or waste of energy mm -hmm. the waste will come from the intellect and the like dislike will come from the mind it's the mind that mm -hmm. that that's play you see so uh, we must realize that these are the two culprits which are which are generating the resistance which mm -hmm. are generating the want to do this it is preventing you to be in the flow of events it preventing you to right right preventing you to become sahaj you know yes preventing you to become sahaj there is we have to be sahaj ultimately mm -hmm. so so the moment mind or intellect says the ego says yes yes i don't want to do so that's that becomes a sahaj we don't become you know flexible right so this is first thing is understanding what is happening where the dislike or resistance comes from somewhere our pota pano is also there our design or scheme of thing that this is the way it should be done but the fellow is not doing according so i don't want to, i don't want to associate myself mm -hmm. with so it's the mind it's the intellect and it's the pota pano or design or scheme of things that we have set in our mind this is the right way of things and things are not right so i will not so that generates the dislike and that generates the resistance to i don't want to what is me what activity attending a place event what right so understanding what's happening and then the solution to it as he said one is a rational thinking that if it is not in the best of my interest it is going to harm me then find a excuse and avoid it. right if you, right you know it. and where it is it is not so 50% or more than that it will not be so that it is not harmful to you in that case it's only resistance it's pure resistance it's just a dislike it's a dislike to the person or dislike to the event or dislike to the person yeah those cases we have to cultivate the habit of not listening to the mind mm -hmm. we have mm -hmm. to cultivate the habit not listening to the mind mind may say i don't want to go yes but okay i have noted what you have said but i will do it 
Fears. You know, somebody dislike. I don't like this. So there's some fears generated. Uh, discussion. There's a disgust generated. But if you overrule and do it, and you will find, oh, it was not so bad. It was not bad. So not so bad as I anticipated. The work got over. I, I treated it as a file, and now it, it is. I've settled the file anonymously. So it was not so bad as I felt. So this will generate or end the disgust which was generated beforehand. You know, dislike that was generated. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So uh, as you start uh, practicing this, and over five, six such episodes or events where you have overruled the mind and done it, then you will find it's not so bad. It's not so bad. 
Mm. And in the process, we, we gain a very big thing. We become masters of our mind rather than slave to the mind. Right. Okay. Can we do effort in the mind? In the middle of the night, I feel like the ice cream. I don't go out and I say, no, I think when we'll get to it's a gross ice cream. Ice cream right. is anything good, anything you want to eat. So, this will generate the control over the mind or not listening to the mind if it is not in my best interest. Mm -hmm. Mind being discharged, it will just, thoughts will come out of right. it based on, based on what we have charged in the previous birth. This is good, this is bad, whatever opinions we had formed. So the mind today is playing out its part. It may not be in the interest of today's gnan or today's vision of liberation. Mm -hmm. Today I want to go to moksha. But last birth I didn't want to go to moksha. Last birth I wanted to have, live a nice worldly life and enjoy all worldly and sensory pleasures. So the mm -hmm. mind was formed based on that understanding which I had. Mm -hmm. The mind was formed based on those opinions and that point. Now the situation in this life birth has changed. Now my goal is to attain salvation. Which means I have to square up the accounts in this world. Yeah. For people, whatever. And for that, you have to do according to the Ajna. Yes. The mind may not agree with it. The thoughts may not come. It's support today's Ajna. So that is how, with this understanding, the mind is based on the past and this opinions, which are not in alignment with today's goals of going mm -hmm. to Moksha. So, we need not always listen to the mind because it will not permit me to reach my destination. Right. So, once we have this understanding at the back of our mind, we will be able to learn not to listen to it. And once you listen, learn not to listen to the mind, then obviously the dislike will vanish. Yes. So, uh, that is the same thing as mastering the mind or you know, willpower. And also, you know, the same thing is also called sincerity. Sincerity means sticking to whatever goal you have decided. So your goal is of moksha, your goal is of ayana. So sticking to that, not listening to the mind, which is deviating me from my goal, is called sincerity. Right, right. So that is the other, the other Bhagavan gave two very big words, no? In this worldly life, to respect your gnan and in this worldly life, if someone has morality and sincerity, two key words, and if he's practicing that, then I salute that person. As the Bhagavan said, I will salute. Mm. And for himself, he said, I have these two at the highest level. I have the highest morality, I have the highest sincerity. Yes. So sincerity also over here, to being sincere to the Agnan, being sincere to Agnas, and not listening to the mind, where it is does not allow me to be sincere. Right. That is what's So in the process of reigning your mind, in the process of not, not submitting to your, not submitting yourself to the whims and fancies of the mind, you must be, be I think we become sincere the quality of sincerity develops, it becomes willpower, we become master of our mind, not just slave of our mind. Mm. And we become free from the mind, basically. The mind doesn't rule us. It may right. say what it wants. I, 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 I will not listen. That's it. So mind is independently functioning. I have the discretion whether to listen to it, accept its suggestion, or reject the suggestion. Mm. So we become free from the mind. One thing, yes. you know, from the mind. And once that freedom is achieved, uh, it's a it's a wonderful experience. Amazing. It's a wonderful experience. So this is where that resistance will slowly go out. Mm -hmm. That dislike will start. Resistance comes from dislike. Dislike goes, the resistance will go. And then you become Sahaj. You flow with the events. Yes. You flow with their, you flow with their state and, and that's how uh, your accounts get settled. And more than that, more than that, once you start going on, going with the things as they unfold, with the, going along with the situations, the ego also diminishes. Mm. I want to go out. No, no, what is that? I, 
file number one has to go. File number one is ego also diminishes in the whole process. Mm. Discharge ego also diminishes in the whole process. Right, right. So just overcoming this resistance has so many dimensions. Yes. The mind. Very many. So that's. I hope this answers it. Yes. yes, definitely. This is lots to to think about, but it's a complex knot. And if you stop listening to the mind, it has many benefits. It has many benefits, and that's really what I have noticed is that I have not been going with the flow like that, like you said. So. Mm -hmm. I will. I'm going to keep continue to note this and and work on this homework of not listening to the mind. Give us a okay. few. Okay. See how you do that. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so okay. It's going to be a a long basically, assignment. But basically, what happens is, from the relative standpoint of the relative point, of view, what happens is, I am happy when things go my way. I am happy only when this will happen and that will happen. Right. And if it doesn't happen, I am unhappy. Yes. So now that unhappiness part will vanish away because I am happy otherwise also. Yes. Yes. That's yeah. definitely so where that is. Things are not where I also am happy because I am squaring up. Yes. So the, from the relative standpoint of this happiness is the relative happiness of the ego. But then the, the file number one is also at peace. In favorable circumstances as well as unfavorable circumstances. To understand right. that, means, that, is, that is yes, yes. Jay yes, Jay Sachidana. Hey, Rani, there is always saying in my office, when you track it, it gets done. So you'll be if you track <laughs> it, you won't feel all this stuff. Okay, Jay Sachidana. <laughs> so yeah, man. Uh, I'm sorry, um, I have a bad cough, so I went and got some big <coughs> cough drops before I could ask anything. Um, uh, my thing was very similar to what you have been talking about. Uh, what I'm struggling with is uh, if I get up at 5 o'clock, I decide to do Pratha Vidhi and do all the prayers, but I uh, invariably start feeling very sleepy. Then I say, okay, I will do it at 8 o'clock or, you know, when uh, the usual prayer time. So I'm struggling to discipline my body. My mind seems to be thinking that it's better to sleep at that time. I'm trying to control or like to um, train my mind or try, you know, try to stick to this and not procrastinate. Uh, so that is what I'm struggling with right now. I still feel I'm not, I'm not doing that purushat. <clears throat> That getting up, I know I want to uh, get up at five o'clock and do it. So that is what I'm struggling with. And uh, so when I do the Pratha Vidhi and when I say that uh, uh, that it, I don't need is uh, Sansar ki koi bhi vastu mujhe nahi chahi, there's one sentence which comes. And uh, so that's why I wonder why the sleep is becoming more important. <laughs> so uh, is it just the mind? And how, how do I uh, how do I get over this? Ms. Anji? Ms. Anji? May you ask me? Oh, sorry, yeah. I, I didn't. Anyone? Yeah, 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 I sorry. want to know how to con uh, control see, there are There are one or two aspects to this. Hmm. First thing is, otherwise, if anyway, normally you're doing it at 8 o'clock. Yes. Do you want to go do at five o'clock? Because it is, I have more time at that time. Five to because six. Because you, uh, you have more time, so you can do it peacefully or slowly. Um, yes, yes. Uh, see, there are two things. One is either you gradually increase, you go upwards. Instead of eight, you do it at seven. That uh. is, you're training the body. So training mm -hmm. the body to get up early and do it. Uh. And then from seven, it becomes six. And then from six, it becomes five. That is one approach. Huh. Because if the body is physically not uh, able to reschedule a big three-hour jump, you know, there Just is one possibility, one huh. possibility, gradually huh. going up. Other thing is, 
what is the benefit of doing at five o'clock is what your intellect has to be convinced you know so if you tell the intellect yes see i am more free i'll be at uh, i'll be able to do it with full concentration in the presence of the chitta hmm. uh, that is the thing and as dada bhagwan has also said that 4 to 6 is hmm. ideal hmm. that is hours before sunrise essential the point is that so at that time you know, there's a lot of peace around in the sense the world is asleep no. and when the world is asleep there are no vibrations you know? and in that you are able to con- so that and in that period a person is able to concentrate and all his divine prayers reach the divine deities you know all the devi devtas mm-hmm. so if we are convinced that by doing earlier mm-hmm. i have my my advantage that i have more time and i will do it slowly and it is a nice environment sometimes hmm. you try to up early and see just just go out or if, if possible out of the house across the street or hmm. from the terrace view the world everybody is sleeping things are so calm it's a wonderful uh, wonderful atmosphere hmm. Hmm. you know supposing you have to take a early morning flight or go yes. depart early. Yes. You get up at four, and then yes, you see exactly. oh, how peaceful it is outside. How peaceful exactly. it is. Yes. That aha feeling, that aha feeling, is what will motivate you. It is so nice. Let me do it. Yes. So this is goading the mind and intellect, you know, yeah. to do it. And so, so generate this aha feeling. See the advantages and benefits of doing on the morning, <coughs> and, then, and then you will be able to do it. Oh. Mm. I so then you need to do it at five, and if you find five is a big jump to begin with, then go in steps of instead of eight make it seven or instead of eight make it six, and then from six you go to five because the body also has to get tuned to do it. That device standing. No, so that's there are two ways. Get up at five to, anyway. So yeah. Sorry. No, sorry. anyway, get up at five. I have to. So. Ah uh-huh. uh-huh. okay. You anyway wake up at five. Yeah, if yeah. you anyway wake up five. and then 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 there is that then it is a matter of rescheduling or motivating your I mind i mean i think why am i so lazy then you know that's why lazy is because you are used to doing it <laughs> then what do you do i am at 5 let me understand your schedule no 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 my actually my mother in law wakes up at 5 as she is 90 years old so i have to help her at 5 o'clock so automatically i get up at 5 o'clock anyway and then what do you do after that after that till 6 o'clock i she doesn't need any help So the five to six is there for me, so I don't really sleep. But why am I not using that time to pray? That is my thing. Why am I not doing that uh, extra this thing? Because then the whole day becomes little tied up, you know. So uh, after six, what happens? After that, I have to help her. I have to give her coffee. Then my, uh, you know, the usual my husband has to go to work. So we have, you know, breakfast and all the stuff. So uh, then you know, like she's at home, I'm also at home, so I have to help her every one hour, two hours. So it becomes busy. What I'm saying is uh, morning. Okay, okay. So, so six to eight would be say preparing breakfast and uh, yes, yes. and, and, and everybody, everybody leaves home. Husband leaves. Home. Yes, yes. So the, I, after eight, you are free then. Yes, I can. No, yeah, I also work from home, so I have to sit. Okay, you also work from home. Yes, yes. So so, so then, you do it between eight and nine. Is what is you do the vidhi. Yeah, exactly. At nine o'clock, I have to come down again. I have to help her with her breakfast, you know. And then you have to go to your work. Yeah, what? I work from home only, so get paid. Yeah, 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 yeah. From home, but you have to ah, then attend. Your yeah. From no, home. I have to cook and everything. So the usual ah, okay. daily routine starts. Ah, so no, I was just trying to understand your yes, your schedule. Yes. So, uh, so it's fine. So you know, basically, there is nothing big. It's it's we have got we have got into the groove. That yeah. I will do things according to this timetable. Exactly. So it is only bit, then it is only a matter of unsettling, unsettling or getting out of the group. Yes. You, yes. You are waking up. You are anyway in time. Yes. Then what you should do is then you should by force do it two three times, two three mm. days or four, mm. and 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 pray to Dada. Dada, give me the strength mm. to do Prata Vidhi at five o'clock. Mm. If you pray to Dada and ask for strength, you will get the strength. No, okay. <laughs> it is basically mm. forming up the mind. It is basically mm. forming mind that I want to do it. Yes. 
and once you form up ask for strength and for a few days you just do it by force you know by force. if necessary drink half a cup of tea or coffee and then do it okay. to to reduce that uh, that sleepiness you know yes so uh, to begin with huh? not i am not saying make it is a habit but to begin with. yes uh, and then 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 in five to six once it goes mm-hmm. well and then uh, you, you know what will happen is you will be charged the entire mm-hmm. antaskaran has become so well aligned with the pure soul then in, in that state of awareness with that state of freshness yes uh, you if you tend to the course of mother in law and of breakfast you will breakfast. be in an absolutely different frame of yes. mind a different level of awareness right. peace and happiness yes and yes. you also experience you will also experience that whatever work you do after that it flows very smoothly yes. effortlessly and very nicely mm. breakfast get prepared very smoothly and nicely no mistakes here and there the mother in law also is not winky wonky she also agrees to whatever you do mm. this activities post with the will be so smooth and yes, and so exactly. easy that you yourself will feel what otherwise i take one hour to do is happening in 45 minutes uh-huh. so you will okay. also see the benefits yes you will start yes. seeing the benefits. post myself yes ah. hmm. so once the benefits are in front of you the intellect will automatically say, no no get up at and the mind will say chalo 5 o'clock get up get up get up ah uh-huh. so this is how you will able, this is how you will be able to retrain your antaskaran mm-hmm. into mm-hmm. getting up at five o'clock okay. again is, is the mind which is at playing the mind and intellect are playing a part that's all hmm okay i think i'll do that yes so with with, with all this understandings and in, in the present scenario or work schedule that you have mentioned mm. this will definitely help you to get up at five and a few days of that and seeing the and get the benefits and all then it's uh, you will do it more and more and after a few weeks what will happen is this will be your new pattern no, this will no, be a no. new group of daily schedule yes. and then automatically it'll happen even if you don't want to do it you five o'clock chalo with it it'll just ah. run it will just happen you know it happen in automatically right right, right. and then after some time will happen unless you do it at 5 you will not feel happy good also so you will do it at 5 in and for some reason you are not able to get up at 5 say 5 15 you will still do the vidhi and then only start your day okay i will report back next week i will force myself to do it this week and yes thank you so much but post, post with, with, with the with benefits you know not to grudging with with some uh, goal in mind yes i want to get the advantage of doing it in the brahma mora i want to get the advantage of being in a fresh fresh of mind and you will see the benefits and then yes. i'm sure definitely definitely it will, it will become a revised or a new ha huh. huh. okay jai sat jai sat ji dibagan ji jai sat ji anand ha jai sat sri ji wake up do your morning uh, important stuff yes do surya namaskar ah. do super brain yoga and finish your nischay vyavahar vidhi first first because that is mandatory compulsory every day you must do it ah. you should be able to do it yes. that's what i do you must to do it yes because that is the mandatory thing then during the day whatever you whenever you get time do it fine yes. the rest of the prayers oh. but the main start the day three mantra three mantra if not five times one time and finish your nischay vyavahar charan vidhi because it says you have to do it must once a day yes. and with your surya namaskar and i believe you do the super brain yoga also uh, topu karna topu karna yes yes we do that mm-hmm. yes do 25 times if not 25 do 50 times mm-hmm. really it it helps i'm not joking yes yes i know mm. it helps you change your decision into action mm. okay. how i don't know yes. you people know it and you have been practicing you are practicing do that right in the morning okay. chai chai chidana yes sachidan thank you so much chai sachidan come we come is up and we'll continue in this was good uh, observation so let us continue that uh, for another week जय सचिदानंद नमो विद्रागाय नमो विद्रागाय
ുംചനമുക്കാരോ ുംഗവതിവാസുദേവായ ജയ സച്ചിദാനന്ദ് ജയ സച്ചിദാനന്ദ് ജയ സച്ചിദാനന്ദ് ജയ 